All right, so uh, this is instructor Mike, and uh, I'm cleaning a firearm, right? Not my firearm, but I'm doing a person a favor and cleaning a firearm. And so I have my trusty pistol cleaning kit. Now I have a lot of stuff in this kit. So of course people sometimes subscribe to one brand or another. I tend to subscribe to a lot of different things. And of course, this is the same bag that I had when I served in the military. That's right. Oh my God, you see this is still embroidered. That's right. Some of y'all think I'm a Marine. Nope, I'm a former soldier, right? I got mentors who were Marines. So that's why I kind of act Marine-ish. Isn't that something? But let's go on ahead and get started with it. So I'm cleaning a Glock Model 19, uh, nine millimeter. And ew, look at this. Oh my God, it's so dirty. Oh, look at it. Oh God, it's dirty. It's so dirty. Like what the French Union Kings. Oh my God. And of course I got my Asp Scribe Light. Oh my God, look at it. It is, oh my God. So yes, I got to clean this. And in me cleaning this, okay. Nothing against the person whose gun I'm cleaning, right? Sometimes... You know, sometimes you don't know. And so I figured what a good time to go on ahead and just do a little impromptu class. And you may ask, what kind of lube am I using? Radco lube. That's right. Radco lube. All right. Uh, they have a lot of years in the industry uh, providing oil for various different um, uh, reasons. And so I usually use the break free CLP. But I figured I was gonna try Radco Lube, okay? Uh, the link will be in the description. You can go on Amazon and purchase Radco Lube. Uh, let's see how this does, okay? It's a CLP, just like uh, other kinds of CLPs, so titled. But let's see how it actually does when I'm actually cleaning the firearm. Of course, I like to wear gloves. Um, these are the mechanics type gloves, okay? Um, and I have various brushes, of course, <laughs> the type of brushes you might see in the military. When I know when I first entered the military, these are the kind of the brushes that I used. Okay. But then I saw these wonderful brushes and I forgot the name of the company. If you know the name of the company, go on ahead and put it in the, in the comments, but they've got different angle brushes to ah, smart brush. <laughs> Isn't that something branding? You got to make sure if you got a company, you brand your stuff all over because it'll help you remember and it's by Real Avid or Avid. I think Avid is probably better. Um, and so these brushes, right, they allow you to be able to reach little nooks and crannies and things like that with the firearm. So our, I argue that these brushes are better than these brushes right here, right? Because these actually get to different places and spaces where you need to do some cleaning. And looking at this slide, we're definitely getting ready to go to surgery on this, okay? So... Let's get to it. I also have my little pick to be able to read certain things. And I have Q-tips. Now, these things don't come in cleaning kits. You're going to have to go to stores like Walgreens, CVS, uh, Walmart to be able to get Q-tips, stuff like that. Um, so without further, there's a, ah, further delay, let's get to work. So if you don't know how to disassemble your firearm, I strongly suggest that you look at your owner's manual, okay? Assume every firearm is loaded, point that firearm in a safe direction, keep your finger off of the trigger, okay? Once you make sure that the firearm is, come on, fool. Ooh, that's the purpose of making sure that this firearm is clean, because sometimes you'll have problems in even trying to assemble it, okay? All right, so let's just say you get a firearm, it looks like this. Of course, we assume every firearm is loaded. Point that firearm in a safe direction. Keep your finger off the trigger, okay? First thing you want to do is you want to remove that magazine by pressing the mag release, okay? If you want to remove the magazine, press the mag release, okay? This is the mag release. So if I want to release the mag, press the mag release, okay? I'm going to press that mag release, okay? Make sure that I remove the magazine and any source of ammunition. No ammunition should be where you are actually cleaning your firearm, okay? Then I want to make sure that I rack the slide to the rear or lock the slide to the rear. You've seen videos I've done before. So this is the slide lock. Now, some people will say it's not called the slide release. I call it the slide lock, slide release, and it has a slide stop inside of it. Whatever your nomenclature is, I, whatever, tomato, tomato, okay? All right, thumb underneath up to lock and hold. Now, remember, 
Glock is notorious for having a slide lock that is flushed with the actual grip assembly. This is part of the grip assembly. This is the frame, okay? And you see how flush that is? See how flush that is? And I'm gonna show you an example because I have my SIG 320 on me, okay? And I'm gonna show you the difference because this is something that you should know, right? Here we go. No mag in the well, no round in the chamber, good. Look at my slide release right here. Do you see how it protrudes out? Right, and it's on both sides too. It's an ambidextrous slide lock, slide release, right? It's very obvious, very conspicuous, very out there, okay? As opposed to Glock, where it's very flushed and you can see side by side the difference, okay? Side by side the difference, all right? So, um, that's that, okay? So, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thumb underneath up to lock and hold, lock the slide to the rear, and you have to make it deliberate uh, so that way this slide lock can actually get into that groove, okay? So I wanna make sure I bring that firearm again after assuming every firearm is loaded, point that firearm in a safe direction, keep your fingers off the trigger, okay? I wanna make sure that the firearm is pointing to safe direction, bring that firearm towards me, look inside through the ejection port into the magazine release to make sure there's no magazine in the well. No magazine in the well. And I'm going to point upward in a direction or in a safe direction. Make sure there is no round in the chamber, but you need to have a light source in the event you can't see. It should be obvious, but screw it. Let's go on ahead and look. All right. No round in the chamber. Now, I am going to go on ahead and send this slide forward. You can do that one or two ways. Okay. Slide release. You can push it down. The gun experts will sit there and say, well, you'll damage the frame or you'll damage whatever. Look, send that slide forward and into battery. Okay. That's one way you can do it. Or you can simply slingshot it by pulling the slide back, releasing the slide lock from being locked, and allowing the slide to go forward on its own power by way of the guide spring into battery. Whichever one you do, whether you do a slingshot or whether you do slide lock release, okay, it's up to you. All right. Now, when I begin to disassemble this fire, I'm going to make sure I have a good grip on the, okay, the neck portion, which is what I call it, the top portion of the back strap and the rear of the slide pushing back just a little bit, okay? There's a little takedown lever that's right here. Gloves busted, you'll be right. All right, push this down just a little bit, hold it, okay, or release the slide, and then press the trigger. You will see some slight forward movement in the slide itself, okay? Push that forward, and now it is ready to be separated into two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crimes and the district attorneys who Oh, I'm sorry, that's law and order. Wrong thing, sorry. It, it is ready to be separated into two separate yet equally important groups. Oh, dirty. Here we go. The slide assembly and the grip assembly. Do not disassemble anything in this anymore. This is it. This is as far as you're going to go. Anything beyond this, you need to be a Glock armorer or a pistol armorer to be able to break this down beyond this. And it's possible, but you need the training. And there's so many small parts. Don't do it. This is the grip assembly. This is as far as you go with this, okay? So this is part one, okay? Otherwise called the frame, but the grip assembly. Why do I say assembly? Because it has a trigger housing group and other pieces in here when assembled the grip assembly, okay? Now, this is the slide assembly, the main piece, like you saw the grip in that, the main piece is the slide, okay? So you have two more parts to take out of here, all right? You have the guide spring, all right? And this is the factory model guide spring. There are other guide springs that uh, will work with this pistol, and I'm gonna give this person to whom, you know, they own this, they own this pistol, I'm going to give them a better guide spring, okay? I got a better guide spring just laying in my book bag. I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to go on ahead and give it and help this person. Why? <sighs> Your life matters, right? That helps, right? So guide spring, this would be piece number two. And so now you have the barrel on the inside. Here's the way you release the barrel from the slide, right? Here is the ejection port. Simply just put your finger, pop that up slide it right on out, okay? So now you've got the barrel and you've got the slide. Here are the four parts. This is called field stripping, right? Grip assembly, nothing else. Guide spring, barrel, slide, okay? Slide. Now, typically with me, I like to work with the slide first. Whichever one you wanna start with first, 
I don't, I don't care, right? I don't really care. Whichever one you want to start with first, that's on you. Me, I like to just take, everybody has their own method of cleaning. I'm not going to claim myself to be a cleaning expert. So if you are thinking I'm a cleaning, no, okay, I'm humble. I'm not a cleaning expert, okay? I just know how to do what I need to do and as much as I need to do to free the firearm from any corrosion and any kinds of things that could be damaging to the firearms itself or the firearm itself. But there are some experts who understand the kind of metal or the kind of material this is. And then you want to be careful about the brushes and things like that that you use that could, you know, damage the metal over time. I'm just like one of those, you know how guys, we don't read instructions, right? We just think we know everything. So we just try and use stuff, you know, you, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. So that's why I pretty much stick to simple things. See how my gloves are just busting apart. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. So I'm going to keep this like it is because I don't have my other glove. I can't find it someplace. We're going to keep it like it is. We're going to keep going. We're, we're doing it live, man. We're doing it live. Okay. All right. So what I like to do is I like to take this uh, CLP. Okay. And because it's a lot of WTF material in here. All right. I'm just going to go on ahead and break this up. This is cleaner, lubricant, and preservant okay so i'm just gonna go on ahead and just put some in here now that was a lot okay so and, and this needs a lot of it all right so i'm gonna go on ahead and put it in here like i just did okay it's kind of hard for you to see because it's gonna slide right on out but i'm gonna put my finger right here i want you see it okay i put it in there that for me is gonna be probably more than enough that i need to break this stuff up and then i'm gonna get to work now because of the area that I am using and because I want to bust up some of this stuff that's in here, I'm going to use this smart brush right here. You see how it fits right into that area? Fits right into that area. So we're going to go on ahead and get to work. And I like the fact that it bends, right? It's very durable. Oh yes, see it's coming off. Yes, you can't see it, but I'm going to show you in a minute. You see how it's breaking up all that stuff? Yes, juicy. All right, and you got to make sure that you have, I had it around here, where are you at fool? All right, sorry. Got to make sure that you have these two, right? These are little squares. Now, some people like to take old t-shirts and cut them up, stuff like that. But these are squares, okay? I like them. Um, I like old t-shirts, too. You're able to wash them and stuff like that. Um, and it saves you money, too. But I'm going to use these two. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. By your head right now. All right. And so I like the fact that on the end of these brushes, you got these various little picks. So I can go on ahead and get up in these little corners too. Okay, these little corners right up in here, right? Right up in here. Okay. And I'm gonna have a cleaning class too. You gotta make sure you maintain your firearm, you know? And I will say this, that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons why I do like quality firearms because quality firearms will run dirty. They will run dirty. What do I mean by that? When you have a quality firearm, like a Glock or a SIG or a CZ or a FN or a Canic, you know, battle-tested firearm, if I didn't say the names, charge it to time and not to me not acknowledging you, okay? Um, but if you have quality firearms like Smith & Wesson, yeah, you want to keep it operable. You want to make sure that you keep it clean. But what's the reality? Are you going to do that? I'm going to be the first person to tell you the truth. I don't clean my shit all the time either. I mean, sometimes I'll go six months without cleaning it and I'll just take a boar snake and I'll just run that boar snake right on through the feeder ramp of the barrel right here, okay? And I'll run it right into the barrel and keep that lubed and stuff like that and my firearm performs flawlessly, okay? So there is a difference between what you should do, which is I recommend you should clean your firearm after every use, okay? Um and in cleaning your firearm after every use, uh, you'll, you'll develop certain things. You'll develop the confidence in being able to know your firearm, uh, the ins and outs of that firearm. Let's talk relationships for a quick minute, right? No one knows you, and they're not going to know you until they spend what with you? Time. And that's why you need to spend time with your firearm, right? If you begin to learn your firearm, you'll begin to have the confidence to be able to break that firearm down. You know, it's easy to replace barrels. It's easy to replace guide springs and things like that. Um, and so if you, you know, these are things that you can replace at your level. It's even easier to replace slides. There are people who get 
uh, a Glock factory model or aftermarket slides, especially because Glock has so many things that you can actually uh, uh, get extra parts for, aftermarket parts for, stuff like that, especially for optics and different slides. So these are things that you could change at your level, right? But you won't know that unless you spend time with the firearm and actually break it down and begin to clean it, okay? Clean it. Um, it's very uh, simple to clean. I would usually paint, play nice music, but I don't want to play that because I don't want any copyright issues, stuff like that on this video that's going to go up. But I like to play nice music because this is very therapeutic. You know, it's very therapeutic. It really is. Okay. You got to pay attention to detail. Make sure that you get up in the little parts and crevices, stuff like that. Because dirt, carbon buildup, all those things like to hide. They like to hide. Kind of like doing a narcotic search warrant. When people want to hide narcotics, they'll hide it in little small spaces and places, right? Won't they? Yeah. And you think like they don't have anything there. You're like, yeah, it was there. You just didn't look harder. Right? So, I'm going to put a little bit more oil on here. Now, be careful. You don't want to oil it up too much, right? But you want to put just enough to be able to get the job done. Right? Shouts out to Radical Lube for providing this. Okay. Now, here we go. Remember I told you about those brushes, right? Here's another type of brush right here. Do you see how this brush fits right in this space? Oh, look it. Shouts out to Real Avid Brushes. Yes, you see how it gets right in that little space. Oh, I love it. And it's got a little pick on the side too. It's amazing. Right. Don't get me wrong. I love toothbrushes. I go to Walgreens and buy up some toothbrushes. Right. You could do that. But I like specific little brushes that are designed to do the job. It's like Bob Ross. We'll put a little tree right here. Just a little tree. No. OK. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I like to see all that breakup. Man, this is nasty. You all right? You're learning a lesson, aren't you? <laughs> I bet you're not going to have this dirty again. <clears throat> mm. Yep, yeah, get on up in there. And so I don't have a montage for this, so they can go on ahead and just cycle through and you're like oh my god i want to see it i want to see you cleaning it michael no but i want to get in here right it's like a relationship i don't want to rush through it i want to spend time with this i want to make sure because this is the tool that levels the playing field when you decide to fight evil and when you decide to fight evil right you want to make sure that the tool that you're going to use has a greater chance of working you got to be careful with your terminology because if you sit there and say it will work, it creates an absolute. And, you know, those of you who know Murphy's Law, if it can happen, it what? It will happen for sure. Yeah, let's get on here. here clean. Yeah, look at this. He, ha, ha. Okay, I'm just, that was crazy. That was stupid. All right. It's all nasty. I think I need to get it bigger. Where you at? Okay, get in here. All right. Oh, so much better. So much better. Now this is the striker, right? What you may have to do is press the striker safety. Okay, so there's three safeties, drop safety, firing pin safety, and the trigger safety. So this will be the firing pin safety, otherwise the striker safety. Push that in and push the striker forward, right? So that the striker is exposed right here, right? And then you'll be able to get in a little bit more with the Q-tip. Get in here, get in here. All right, see, fits right on in there. And I wanna get in there. I should clean as much as I can. Now, you armorers are probably like, oh my God, Mike, you want to actually pull that back plate out and get, I'm not an armorer, so I'm not doing all that, right? If you need that deep of a cleaning, take it to someone who's an armorer 
who might be able to go even deeper. And there are some times where you need that. I'm not that. This is just what do we call it? Entry level, basic level, operator level maintenance. And there are some guys who are way more perfect at this than I am. So I told you, anybody who's ever met me, I'm a very humble person. I'm not going to ever come off like I know everything. I just know a lot about a little. Often tried, never denied, and willing to be tried again. So if you know better, sign off in the comments. Teach me. I crave for knowledge. Yep, I'm just doing. And I like this radical lube. It's nice. It's definitely cleaning. Right? I'll show you shortly. See? This is where we are. Right? This is where we are. Get a put some put some light on that gym. Right? There we go. I'm gonna keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Make sure you get all up in there. See where I'm getting? Now I push the striker back. I want to make sure. But you got to be careful because these Q-tips can leave little, I want to call them dust bunnies. But that's what they are. So you got to make sure. It's always nice to have a can of air where you can blow some of that stuff out. Okay, a can of air, like the computerized type of air. Now, if I'm wrong, sound off in the comments. I don't know. That's just what I use. That's just what I use, the can of air to get some of that stuff out. And they actually sell it. Certain gun stores, too. Oh, yeah. Yep. And by the time I'm done cleaning, I'll have so many Q-tips here. So many Q-tips here. Make sure that you have some kind of mat to put your dirty stuff on. You don't want to mess up your, you know, coffee table or... Have your grandma beat your ass. Baby, if you don't get that shit off my table, I'm going to beat your ass. And then I'm going to take your gun, clean it better than you. And then when you wake up, you're going to learn. Don't you fuck up my table. Your, your granddaddy left me that table. It's about the only thing he was good for was building shit. That sounds toxic, doesn't it? <laughs> Those of you who know I still write children's books too. So go to MikeBrownsBooks.com. Get you a book so that your grandma don't have to talk to you like that. All right. <laughs> Why do I do that? Um, here we go. This Radco, I'm very impressed with this Radco lube. Now, normally I use another brand. I'm not going to say that brand because this is Radco's time, right? But I normally use a different brand. And uh, this is, the I'd say, my second time using Radco. Doing a deep cleaning, though, my first time. I don't want to call it deep cleaning, but whatever. How I usually break down and clean. And this is the perfect time because... My fire, I guess, in, in fairness, my firearm is not as dirty. Not as dirty. And that's fine. You, you know better. You know it's what it is, right? But um, this is the perfect time for me to clean a firearm like this because shit. And a perfect time for me to test out Radco to see how it breaks up and, you know, all that dirt and stuff like that and how it performs on a range. I already know how it performs on a range. It performs very well, actually. I bought a box of a thousand rounds. And ran a thousand rounds uh, through my firearm. And I used Radco Lube to uh, lube it up. Um, and it was fine. It worked well. Uh, and that's the thing, you know. There are different lubricants that are out there. And it's good to see Radco on the team of providing different lubricants for firearms users, owners, operators to be able to lube the firearm up so that it can work properly. Yeah. See? Uh. All right, let me get some Q-tips and get up in there. Now, even though, right, it looks a little bit better, right? I want to still get in there. You see, those of you all who know, you know I still got more work to do, right? But you can see it looks, we're on the way. It looks a little bit better, right? A little bit better. Okay. Mm. 
And this will be one of my vlogs here. Yeah. I hope you all are enjoying my vlogs. You know, I got the, this will be episode two, actually. Um, yeah. When I went to Michigan, that was fun. Again, shouts out to um, Center Mass and Uncoiled out in Livonia, Michigan. So if you're in that area, stop stop by, tell them Instructor Mike said hi. Now here's where the pick comes in. This is what I'm doing. I'm taking this pick and I'm trying to get into these little areas right here, right? To release up some of this dirt. Dirt, dust, build up, probably with some old frosted flakes. Some Fritos. No Fritos in here. It's crazy. Yeah, you gotta get in there and get that. This is where your guide spring pushes up against. Yeah. See, getting all in there, taking this pick and getting all in there. And of course. Real avid smart brush can get in there too. Here's another thing I like to do too. Normally, what I like to do is I like to sit there and I don't know if I want to use that. I can use that top screw because I can always wipe it off. We'll use that top. Things you can use on the spontaneous, on the fly. Oh, stupid cups. <clears throat> hey, I did, I, it was right there. I wasn't even paying attention. It was right there. Um, here we go. So I would sit there and take just a little bit of this. And you don't need a big cup like this, right? But screw it. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. Okay. Sounds wet. Radical Lou. All right, here we go. So I'll take this and then I'll have this to be able to dip the Q-tip in, right? Just to get a little bit, okay? Just to get a little bit to be able to just put oil in certain little spots, right? Because they got different size bottles, different size bottles. And I want to be able to just put a little bit of the red co lube oil on there so that way it's just so easy yeah mike you're doing it the hard way shut up it's my process fool oh <laughs> um, there we go Again, smart brush. These are some very good brushes. I got two sets of them. These are some very good brushes. Lost one set. Shouts out to Brandon at Eagle Sports Range. Eagle Sports Range, 5900 West 159th Street in Oak Forest, Illinois. Go there for your firearms needs. I love those guys. I love them. I love that gun store. And you see me there all the time. Why do I love Eagle Sports Range? Because you really feel like you are at home. Some of you gun stores, you guys are oppressive. Oh my God, you love guns, you love the 2A, all that great stuff, but you're oppressive. At least in how you make people feel, right? And don't get me wrong as a fuck your feelings kind of guy. I'm definitely, okay, I get it. There are some times you gotta put feelings in your back pocket, but come on. I don't want somebody you know, making my grandmother, God rest her soul, you know, if she uh, were to, and she owned firearms too, you know, baby, I don't like the way they make you feel in there like you don't belong. You know, that's the thing, right? So I love Eagle because they are very welcoming. Very, very welcoming. So shout out to them and Brandon. Brandon found my brushes. That's why I said all that. <laughs> Brandon found my brushes. I thought I lost them. And he found them for me. So good deal, good deal. Oh my God, this looks so much better. Radical lube. <laughs> Good job there. Good job. Good job. It breaks it up. 
It speaks, huh? All right, all right. You're good. Breaks it up. And as you can hear the background, I'm teaching you all the class while teaching the student the class too. So, yep, there we go. Just make sure that you get up in there, these little cracks and crevices, stuff like that. Yeah, these are some awesome brushes, right? Smart brush. I don't know if you can see that. Smart brush, right? Smart brush, smart brush, right? Some real good brushes. Real good brushes. If I'm doing something wrong, sound off in the comments. Right? There are you all who do know better than me. Right? So I yield. I yield to your expertise. Of course, I will always do research on the back end to find out if what you're saying is true. Okay. Now, you also want to make sure that you clean the breach face, right? This is the breach face, right? This is the area where, remember, you have the extractor and the ejector. So this is the extractor right here, okay? Let me get a little brush to point to it. This is the extractor right here. Sorry about that. Right there, that little piece. I'm trying to show it to you. Little piece. That little piece right there, that is the extractor, okay? Okay. And that is what is responsible for pulling the casing, right? This is the extractor right there, right? And that's one of the pieces that's responsible for pulling the casing out, okay? Let me see if I have a, yeah, I actually do. Nope, 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 oh, okay. So this is a USAA little keychain type round. I kind of don't want to put, no, I'm not going to because I don't, it does, it's too big, right? Snap cap. Nope, don't have it. Okay, but you got to make sure you get a brush in there. Okay. And again, shouts out to them, right? Got a brush that fits right in that area. Fits right in that little area. Okay, get anything out of there. You don't want it to build up. You don't want it to build up. Okay. You don't want that brush to be hard to get in there either, but you want to get in there, right? Yeah, nice and clean, okay? And you also want to make sure that you clean this breach face too. So look at, look at this brush, look at this smart brush, look at this. It fits, it fits right in there, right in there. Oh man, it's awesome, right? Why do I want to clean this? Now, here's another thing too. Before you do that, right, I want to make sure that I push in the striker safety and I want to push the striker forward because I want to make sure that I do a twofer, right? I want to clean that striker tip and the breach face two. Striker tip and the breach face two. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the way these brushes are flexible. So nice. And they have these not only in this which is the nylon, but you've also got the brass too. So if you gotta break some stuff up, you could use the brass brush too. <laughs> All right, here we go. Go ahead and clean this.
You know what that sound means. If you know what that sound means, put it in the comments. I don't know what it means. But I do. But I don't. But I do. I don't have a montage for this. You know what a montage is? That means you got some montage. Montage. I can't say now. I don't want to get a copyright claim. But anytime you want to, you know, not waste time and get through several scenes to get to the end without watching the whole thing. Baby, you need a montage. Montage. Yeah. Watch every your copyright claim. You're singing the song. A lot of Q-tips, you're going to go through them. And just imagine if you cleaned your firearm after every use, you would imagine how good you would get with it. Some people are like, man, you really good with your firearm and manipulating it. I clean it all the time, shit. Well, when I do. I don't know who that is. That would be the doorbell, but no one should be looking for me because I'm not here, even though I am. businesses in this building um here we go still going oh this looks so much better no smells nothing toxic or anything like that no smells just straight up just oil and work oil and work lubricant and work there we go now one of the things i like to do is i like to push this to make sure push the striker safety and make sure it freely falls. Freely falls. Yep. Yeah. It's nice. Very nice indeed. I want to clean up in here. Make sure I clean the breach face. Make sure I clean the interior of the slide because where there is friction. It causes a lot of buildup of particles and dust and a bunch of different things that get in there. And I want to clean it. Yeah. And then you paint a little tree in it too. Just like Bob Ross. Shouts out, sir. I would actually say use a new one of these. <clears throat> Sorry, you kind of hear the frog voice a little bit. You DIs know what the frog voice is. When you use your voice a lot and you still have to speak. So you got to push through and you got to sound like this. Frog voice. Ribbit. There's a little piece in there I need to get. Nope. Taking this little brush, getting in this corner right in here. Right by where the site, the front site is. Q-tip, get it in there. Good. 
So I said, yeah, to spend time with this. Now, ruffles have ridges, firearms do too. And with the, okay, cool. With the slide, um, you want to make sure that you take the brush. Depends, right? Because you'll get salt deposits that as you begin to go on the range and you begin to rack the slide, you'll get salt deposits uh, from your hands that'll lodge up in the crevices of the slide. So you want to make sure that you take the brush and you want to make sure that you uh, clean that. I would start with the nylon first before you start with the actual brass brush. Brass is going to damage the firearm, but start with the nylon first. If you could break it up with the nylon first, cool, okay? And of course, I'm going to go on ahead and get some of that Radco Lube, okay? And we're just going to put just a little bit. on here. You all seen the paintings on my wall, so you know I like painting sips and stuff like that. So you gotta have a little artistic touch to it. Just, I'm doing too much, don't mind me. Okay. All right, and then I wanna break this up. So I'm gonna use, again, Smart Brush, uh, the nylon brush. I'm gonna break it up a little bit. Make sure that you angle the brush to get like in there, right? I wanna get in there, right? And you can even take this pick and do that to make sure that you're getting in there. You're not gonna hurt the firearm, so don't think that you are, but you wanna get in there. All right. Now that's if you see it's a lot of them there. Sometimes there may not be a lot of them there. Like I don't see a lot here. Cause it ain't been used. That's why it's not a lot. Nice and, wait, almost said nice and clean. Yeah, there we go. Nice and clean. You got to get in here too. You got to get right in here too. Still a little dirty. Okay, catch those things. See, I'm getting in there with this brush. Real avid smart brushes. Love them. Love them. It's like they sat down and just, what do I need to make to get in that hole? That <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, that's wrong. I'm in trouble already. But God. Oh, more came out. And what we're going to do is we're going to probably end up going on a break and I'm going to finish cleaning the rest. Well, no, we'll go ahead and go to break it a little bit. Can of air, not your mouth, but in the event you don't have a can of air, a little bit of mouth blow. Mouth air. And your stomach is growling, and that moment just means you need to take a sip from your cup from McDonald's. Shouts out to McDonald's. Water with lemon. Wait, it's in my hand. Okay. 
Just like you try to dig in and get those sugar daddies out of your ear. I'm gonna go on. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. Another thing you need to get are some pipe cleaners. Because if I didn't say pipe cleaners by taking the flight, it sounds like hype cleaners. And you don't want to get any hype cleaners. You want to get some pipe cleaners because hype shouldn't be cleaning guns. <clears throat> Not got of you. When you're fat and you need to sweat, clap your hands. During this time, fill it with some music in your head. Normally I would play music on my own, but I'm doing this for YouTube and I don't want to copyright strike or anything like that. So you can always run a Q-tip through to make sure it's clean, right? Because if you, it, sometimes it could look clean and it's not clean, right? You want to make sure that it's clean. And for what it's worth, see, probably a lot of lights, you can't see. See, now you hold up the light and you see all those extra dust bunnies, right? <laughs> right? Pretty clean for the most, it's a lot of light, so, right? Still a lot of light. Cleaner than what it was before. Good. All right, so I'm gonna set this slide out of the way. Let's get to work. Now you gotta be careful with these because there are some sensitive parts, okay? A lot of polymer. The, the grip assembly definitely consists of a lot of polymer parts. Some parts are made of other metals. I don't know what. Could be aluminum. Some could be metal. A type of metal. I'm gonna break that stuff up. Let's see. See how these brushes. Take that brush. Take that, scrape it right along here.
All right, so what we're going to do is to attend a full cleaning class, look up a gun store near you so you can attend a full cleaning class or you can go to mikebrownsclasses.com. I'm going to start to host gun cleaning classes in Chicago where you can then learn how to break down your firearm. And it would be more than just gun clearing, cleaning. It'll be gun cleaning and malfunctions clearance. Gun cleaning and malfunctions clearance, right? Because you, you need to know what to do in the event you get a stop, stoppage in the cycle of operation of your firearm, right? So you need to know what to do. So you can go to MikeBrownsClasses.com or look up a cleaning class near you. Wow, that's a lot of shisa. A lot of shisa in this pistol. I don't know how to say pistol in German. Break it up. All right, so this is Instructor Mike. You've been trained. Um... You might see another follow-up video in terms of the final product, but you need to get into a cleaning class. Because I could sit there and show you this, but you need to be hands-on with it, right? You need to be hands-on with it. That's always been my little thing. Shouts out to Radco Lube. Radco Lube. Radco Lube. Shouts out to them. For providing an awesome product to help break the stuff in this firearm down. Because Lord, it needed it. <laughs> All right, this is Instructor Mike. You've been trying to follow me on Facebook at Mike Brown Instructor Mike. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram at Yes Mike Said It. Subscribe to my YouTube page, please, Instructor Mike. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. If you're interested in Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs related children's books, right? You can always go to MikeBrownsBooks.com. My books are $5. I think on Instagram, not on Instagram, but on Amazon, it may be just a little bit more. But I am revamping my website to where you can get it directly from me. Directly from me. So, until then, peace. It's just how important this stuff is. We'll talk soon.